And with a bunch of love and a big warm welcome, let's honor Brother Mark Hankin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. All right, turn around, look at somebody and say, you're looking a lot better than the last time I saw you. All right. You can be seated. All right. How many are glad to be in church on Saturday night? We must have the Marines out here on Saturday night. Y'all are the tough ones. Christmas time and Saturday night. Y'all are amazing. So great, great blessing to be here. We appreciate the pastor and his wife. They are just wonderful pastors. And praise the Lord. Appreciate the pastor and uh, appreciate their love for the word of God, their love for the Holy Spirit. And so this is a wonderful church and your pastors are some of the best pastors in all of Houston, Texas. Some of the best pastors in all of Texas. Some of the best pastors in all of the South United States. Some of the best pastors in America. Some of the best pastors in the history of the world. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. I mean, wonderful. Thank God for your pastors. And, and uh, I turned out pastor to 23, 24 years. And then uh, my dad pastored over 50 years, same church. And uh, one of the guys, um, my dad first started pastoring there, 25 people, went over 2,000 people in West Columbia, 3,000 people in town. And I uh, had a guy there named E. Smith. So Sidney Smith, the one I'm talking about last night, is the one that was dancing, and E. Smith was his brother, right? So E. Smith would stop by, because in those days he lived in the parsonage, you know? Yeah. Right? So that church right here, parsonage right next door. And uh, so that's where we lived. And people that went to church thought they should be able to walk in the parsonage anytime they wanted to, so they just used to walk right on in. Anyway, that's why we don't live next door to the church anymore. But... <laughs> Uh, uh, but back in those days, lived next to the church. And so E. Smith, he, you know, he drove a cattle truck, pretty rough guy, but very faithful, good soul winner in my dad's church for many years. And he would stop by my dad's house every Monday morning. Right next to the church. He'd stop by, have his cattle truck, go in and say, Pastor Hankins, how you doing? And he wouldn't stay for to eat or drink nothing. He'd just say, I just stopped by to encourage you and say, thank God for my pastor. And I want you to know I love you and I'm praying for you and I'm with you. And then he'd drive off. And uh, so he asked him one day, he said, how come you do that? He said, well, because when I was growing up, he said, uh, uh, his uh, dad used to do uh, a logging industry in the woods and to get the trees, once they cut them down out of the woods, then they got them out with a team of mules and they had to drag those logs out with a team of mules. He said, so if you know, if you're having a hard time, he said, you'd always get up on the lead mule. He said, and you'd holler and encourage that lead mule. He says, cause if you can get the lead mule out, then all of us are coming out. So he'd stop and encourage the pastor cause he'd say, cause I know if you can come out, all of us are coming out with you. So they all got blessed together. So always in, uh, encourage your pastor and say something good. Encourage him and, and uh, tell him how wonderful he is and his wife is. They are wonderful. Yes. Their commitment to the will of God yes. and thank Amen. God uh, for them. Amen. Amen. And um, I always say that uh, Jesus ascended upon high and he did not give sheetrock unto men. <laughs> now you say, why do you say that? Well, because my dad pastored many years and it seemed like people valued the property more than the pastor. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You know what I mean? In other words, they love the building and all that and takes buildings to do the church, but really without the gift of God there, the building is worthless. Right. Right. So take better care of the pastor than you do the sheetrock. Amen. 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 Jesus sent upon high and he gave gifts fivefold ministry. Amen. Amen. And that's what makes the gift of God so valuable. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Let me, uh, I want to tell y'all a joke real quick. Um, how many of y'all ever been ice fishing 
I've been ice fishing. Well, we're from the south, nobody ever, you've been ice fishing. Well, I've never been ice fishing, and so I've been up to Canada a few times, and, and I've seen people ice fishing, but I never did it. So if you go ice fishing, uh, so it's, uh, you know, you got to drill a hole in the ice, you know, and fish there. And so um, these two guys were ice fishing, right? Two guys ice fishing. And so one of them, he was just catching fish after fish after fish after fish. The other men fishing, he's catching nothing. Other guy keeps catching fish. The other guy catching nothing. So finally, the guy's catching nothing and walks over to the guy that keeps catching fish. And he said, uh, excuse me, sir. He said, uh, I'd really like to know what your secret is because I'm not catching anything over here. And uh, the guy just sat there. He said, excuse me, sir. Could you just please help me? You're catching a lot of fish. I'm not catching nothing. Please tell me what your secret is. And so the guy went, he said, I really can't understand. What are you saying? And he went, and he said, well, what are you saying? The guy went, he said, you got to keep your worms warm. Anyway. All right. Funny. But I was just preaching up in Wisconsin. There was a man and his wife there that went on a date ice fishing. Uh -oh. And he was catching a lot of fish. And his, his date said, well, how come you're catching them? He said, um, and he would take, he was fishing with minnows. And he'd keep that minnow in his mouth, no. keep it warm. And so she learned how to ice fish. And so they were laughing while I was talking about the worm. But they actually did it with minnows. All right. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, whatever it takes. <laughs> uh, all right, open your Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We're going to receive the offering first of all. Praise the Lord. Now, let me give some scriptures real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, chapter 9, two of the best chapters in the Bible on um, finances, on giving and receiving. A lot of, lot of chapters in the Bible that the whole chapter has to do with God's provision for us in this world. How many think God's concerned about you in this world? I don't believe heaven will be all right, but we need some help down here. Somebody said, you singing about the sweet by and by. I need some help in the nasty now and now. <laughs> so, <laughs> in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, chapter 9, and then if you'll write down 1 Chronicles chapter 29, all right? And let me give you these scriptures real quickly here because we've got smart people here tonight. Got any smart people here tonight? Amen. Amen. How many think God knows anything about money? Oh, yeah. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Here's what he says, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. He says, you, you know the grace of God, the churches of Macedonia. Paul's talking to them, verse 2. In a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy, their deep poverty bounds, the riches of their generosity. Or live right. Notice that. Thought. That's total contradiction. That means that they uh, had great trial or adversity. They got what? Real happy. They had deep financial needs themselves, and they gave generously. Amen. <laughs> In other words, people think when they're having their own deep poverty or financial needs, that's the time to stop giving. But these people gave generously right in the middle of their own need. And Paul said they actually gave beyond their power. They gave generously, and he said they begged us to take the money. Hallelujah. In other words, they had such deep need, they said, please take the money. We want to give. And so you can see here, he left Titus there to teach them in verse 6. He said he's going to finish the same grace in you in verse 6. And so he calls this the grace of giving. So see verse 7, as you abound in everything in faith and utterance and knowledge, your diligence, your love does see that you abound in this grace also. So what is this grace also? See that you abound in this grace also. In other words, he's telling them how to abound in the grace of giving, right? In other words, it's possible to do well in one facet of the grace of God and not do well in another facet. Is that what he's saying? He says you do well in your faith, you do well in your preaching, your teaching, your utterance, your knowledge. He said, but really in this area of finances, see that you abound in this grace also. Amen. So if he says see to it, that means you're not going to abound in it accidentally. Right. Yeah. Right. See to it means you're going to have to really study it, get some understanding about this grace also. When he calls it this grace, then he's talking about concerning our finances, that there is a grace for finances. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So this grace simply means it's God's favor, God's blessing, God's ability. And if it includes grace, then it means more than your work, more than your education. It's the grace of God yes. Yes. that comes upon your finances. Yes. 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 
Yeah, thank God for work. We all work hard. Thank God for education. We want to learn and grow. But he said, this grace means it's really something more than just your work. The favor, the blessing, and God's ability will come upon your finances. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. So when he says it's this grace, then he says this, see that you abound in it. Another translation says, see that you excel in it. Well, when I read that years ago, um, I left home. My dad, you know, was a pastor. I went to Bible college and never went really back home to stay ever again. Went right into the ministry. First job in the ministry, made $100 a week and lived in the back of the church. Trent and I first got married. We lived in the back of the church, made $100 a week. So when I left home, my daddy said, there is a God and I'm not him. You know what that means? That means I ain't going to be sending you no money. And he kept to it. In other words, he said, you're going to have to learn to have faith in God and the grace of God in the area of your finances. So um, I began to study those scriptures, the scripture study guide that come out in the finance chapter because uh, I needed to understand how to abound in this grace. Because if I don't have grace in the area of my finances, come on, I'm not going to be able to do very well in the ministry. I'm not going to be able to do any missions work. I can't go nowhere. Because in this world, you've got to have some money. Amen. Come on, you can't go to Africa. You can't go to India. Come on, you can't get on an airplane and say, give me a hug. I love Jesus. No, they want a ticket. You know, you're going to have to pay for it. All right, so he says, see that you abound. So if he's telling you to abound in it, then it must be important to God that you and I abound in it. Yes. Now, there's several reasons why it's important to God. Number one is that um, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness. Don't belong to the devil. Don't belong to the devil's kids. So God don't want the devil always having the best stuff. Amen. He wants his kids to be blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So if you abound in this grace, then that means financially, I like to say, God will bless you so much, he wants to use you as advertisement of how well he treats his kids. That's good. Amen. So I just volunteered for the program. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, see that you're bound in it. That means then you have to study the word and see how to abound in this grace, excel in it in the grace of giving. But he's not just talking about the grace of giving. If you'll study chapter 8 and chapter 9, he's talking about the grace of giving and receiving. Now, to show you that, read the next verse down there, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, where he says, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be made rich. The word rich does not mean everybody's going to have a Rolls Royce. The word rich just simply means abundantly provided for. Come on, plenty for yourself. Come on, so you can be a blessing. Come on to your church. You can be a blessing to missions. You can be a blessing to your children. You can be a blessing to your wife. Amen. You can be a blessing to your grandchildren. In other words, God said, I'm going to bless you enough so you can be a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So in this area, he said, that's a part of our redemption. Amen. So in a part of our redemption just simply means this. Um, uh, in our church, my dad's church, uh, we first started out. My daddy was sick. My mama had a nervous breakdown. We were poor, didn't have no money. But we did it. Well, we were saved and we had the Holy Ghost. Well, we're like that guy that Dad Hagen talked about in that Pentecostal church. He said that guy was so full of joy, he just got full of the Holy Ghost, and he just shouted and ran around the church and rolled across the floor, and not a quarter fell out of his pocket. <laughs> so that means we were real happy we were saved. We just didn't have no money. <laughs> so you're like a double reject. What does that mean? That means you got the Holy Ghost, means nobody likes you. And then you ain't got no money, you're a poor Holy Ghost Pentecostal. Nowadays, if you got money, they at least have to tolerate you. Because <laughs> you can buy the cars and buy the land, come on, buy the buildings, because you got some money. Right? Somebody said Jesus prayed in the garden to get some money. So, now. <laughs> all right, I, I'm gonna, let's move right along. So. So in this area, our family and our church and our ministry was changed by the ministry of Kenneth E. Hagin, Dad Hagin. Because when Dad Hagin came and taught on faith, he taught us that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. Not just from the curse of sin or the devil. 
He redeemed us from the curse of the law, which means we're redeemed from the curse of poverty. Amen. And if you travel anywhere around the world, you know that poverty is a curse. And to break that curse, it takes the blood of Jesus that Christ has redeemed us. That means I refuse to be poor. Jesus paid too high a price for my blessing for me to be cursed. Somebody said the best thing you can do for poor people is not be one of them. Why? Because you can't help nobody poor if you ain't got nothing. You say, I need some help myself. So now, how do you, how do you come out of poverty, right? So that I could travel to Nigeria, Philippines, Vietnam, anywhere. And every time I go, I take thousands and thousands of dollars so that you can bring the pastors in. You can pay for them. You can feed them. You can take care of them. You can leave the missionary with a lot of money. Amen. You know, even the missionaries ain't glad to see you if you're broke. That's right. They'll say, how you doing? You go, I done fine. I don't have no money. They say, well, I don't have no money either. What you doing here? Go back home. So. So God wants us to be a blessing. Come on now in our church and mission around the world. Amen. And so to do that, he says, um, you abound in this grace. And so if it's grace, here's the way the Lord explained it to me. He said, if grace is amazing, we even sing about amazing grace. Y'all like song amazing grace? Yeah. And grace is amazing, right? Yeah. And he said, if grace is amazing in every other area, why shouldn't it be amazing in the area of your finances? Yes, yeah. right. Because it's the same grace. That means one day you should be able to look at your checkbook and sing amazing grace. <laughs> Thank you. One day you should drive up to your house and go amazing grace. Look at how the Lord has provided for me. Come on, get in your car and go amazing grace. Y'all still here? Now I don't want to make nobody mad at me, but I go get in my jet and I go amazing grace. You say, why? Because I come from a little old town. I wasn't even most likely for nothing in my class. <laughs> most likely to go to jail. So when I, when I get out, I go, amazing grace. Y'all still here? Now, he says, see that you abound in this grace. Amen. So to see that you abound in it, sometimes there has to be a radical change in the way you think. Yeah. You've got to start thinking different. Now, you won't have to go far to find somebody that thinks like you. But you have to go a ways to find somebody that thinks like God. Because yeah. God tells you straight up, Isaiah 55, he said, I don't think like you. He said, I don't think like your kinfolk. I don't think like your mama. I don't think like your daddy. He said, matter of fact, I don't think like nobody in Texas. And I don't think like Louisiana people. He said, I don't even think like an American. In other words, God said, I don't think like y'all. He said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, and my ways are higher than your ways. Matter of fact, you can kind of figure out how you think and do the opposite, and that'd be a lot like God. <laughs> so sometimes when you're thinking God's thoughts, it kind of like, your brain is kind of like, you're like, hold it. Somebody say, what are you doing? Say, I'm thinking one of God's thoughts right now. Don't bother me. <laughs> I think I'm fixing to pass out. In other words, when you start meditating on the Word of God, it's alive, and it literally is the mind of a genius. It's the mind of God, right? So in this area, whoo, glory to God, there has to be a radical change in your thinking and in your talking. All right, now let me give you an example. He says to access this grace, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Are you ready? Jump over there, and I'll move as fast as I can. Are you ready? 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, here's what he said. He's talking to them because in chapter 8, they gave out of their poverty, right? He said, but in chapter 9, I'm going to teach you how to give out of your abundance. Come on. He said, Titus is going to stay there to teach you. So apparently you're not going to get it if somebody don't teach you. Yeah. Right? So Titus stayed there to teach him. Chapter 8, they gave out of their deep poverty. I like to say it this way. You can give more than you've ever given and still have more than you ever had. In other words, God's not interested in you giving yourself broke. He's wanting you to learn how to give yourself into an abundance. 
All right, now it's a radical change. What do you think? Brother Copeland, I heard him say this years ago because he had deep debt. And here's what he said. I mean, when he came to get Brother Hagin's uh, tapes, back in those days, real to real tapes, when he came to get Brother Hagin's tapes, and Buddy Harrison was the director for Brother Hagin's ministry. And so he said, I got to have Brother Hagin's teaching. I got to have this teaching on faith. And so he said, but I don't have no money. So he said, I'll just leave you my car and let you have my car if you'll let me have these real to real tapes. So Buddy Harrison said he went outside, looked at Brother Copeland's car, and he said, well, pull it around back. Because it's such a rickety old raggedy car. He said it was embarrassing. He said, we don't even want your car. Just take these. You can pay for them later. So, so he said, the Lord told him, he said, I'm going to teach you how to get rich by giving. I know that's like totally different than what you think. By giving. I was trying to have more money. And I've got to get. So here's what Titus says, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. He says, he that soweth, notice he calls giving sowing. Mm -hmm. He that soweth, come on, sowing, he calls giving sowing. Right. I said he calls giving what? Sowing. sowing. And he says, if you sow what sparingly, come on, that's going to affect your harvest. If you sow generously, then you'll reap what? Generous. Generously. So notice this, he calls giving sowing. See, and people always say, well, well, what do you think? Money grows on trees? Well, it does if you plant it. <laughs> now, <laughs> he calls giving, sowing, y'all still here? And the seed, he said, is guaranteed. And he said, and every time you give and sow, he said, that seed is labeled and has a return address on it. That's right. Yeah. He said that when you sow, when you give, he said, that seed is labeled sparing or generous. And I asked the Lord, I said, well, who gets to label it? Because if I get to label it, I'm going to put generous every time. Generous, <laughs> generous, generous, generous. <laughs> now, the Lord talks to me funny, so you just have to deal with it. He, the Lord said, no, you don't label it. He said, I'm the one that labels it. He said, because when you sow sparingly, doesn't mean you didn't do nothing. You just stayed in your comfort zone. Amen. When you sow generously yeah. is when you get beyond your comfort zone. Oh, yeah. So I asked the Lord, I said, how will I know when I'm generous? Because generous is really different amounts to different people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. If generous was not different amounts to different people, then everybody couldn't be generous. But everybody can be generous. Yeah. Generous is not a certain amount. Generous is an amount in relation to your ability. Mm -hmm. That's right. So you might have only made $100 or $10 last week, but you could still hit the category of generous. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank yeah. you, Lord. Y'all still here? Yeah. So I want to get in that category of generous. You say, why do you want to get in there? Because he said, if I ever get in there in my sowing, then I'm going to get in there in my reaping. Amen. Yes. Amen. So I said, Lord, how will I know when I'm generous? You know what the Lord told me? He said, you'll know. I said, well, how will I know? He said, because when you give generously, it's when you sow a seed and you think about it for months later. <laughs> he said, because if you can give and never think about it again, you're still sparing. <laughs> he said, but when you give and you go, you know, weeks later you go, my God, what was I thinking? <laughs> you say things like, there better be a God. You start getting the Bible out and stuff like that. So. All right. So when you sow generously, <laughs> when you sow generously, you will generally never forget it. Yep. Okay. Amen. Because you gave beyond your power. Yes. Right. So you're actually stretching in your giving, leaving your comfort zone. So when you sow generously, come on. <laughs> I can remember pastoring there in Alexandria, and we were going through a certain challenge financially, and I always had saved some money, but then the Lord said, what, what about that? And, and so I only had 25000 left in my savings for the ministry. And so somebody was a special blessing to me, and the Lord said, how would you like to give them that 25000 I said, I really don't want to. <laughs> And the Lord said, you don't have to. I said, well, I didn't say I wouldn't. Just give me a minute to think about it. <laughs> so I'm going to have to get the scriptures out here. Uh, yeah. So I, I thought about it and I said, well, 25,000. 
If I sow it, come on, I know it's going to come back multiplied. If I hold on to it, I know what I got. And the devil's threatening us right now that this church, come on, not going to be able to make it. So now I got to decide if that is going to be my security or that's going to be my seed. Yeah. So once the devil's threatening me, the devil will say things like, what you going to do if that don't work? <coughs> that tithing, giving, what you going to do if that don't work? Then I learned, the Lord said, just turn it back on him and say, devil, what you going to do Ooh, that's good. when it does work? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Come on, because the devil brings yeah. thoughts. Fear, anxiety. So I, I sold the 25000 And when I sold the 25000 man, the minister I gave it to, you know, later on we were able to give Dad Hagen a couple hundred thousand, 300000 400000 But when he gave that 25000 that was the end of it. So when I sold that seed the guy gave it to the minister, he about started crying. I said, you crying? I'm the one ought to be crying. <laughs> So I sold it, come on. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, you know that's generous. I know it's generous. And the American people know it's generous. So I trust you get the right label on that. Well, you know, we made it. The Lord provided, you know, and had some challenging times, but we came out and we were abundantly blessed. And the Lord spoke to me just a few years later. And here's what he said. He said, do you remember when you gave that 25000 I said, I'll never forget it. <laughs> and here's what he said to me. He said, that was $25 million ago. Wow. And I started figuring out, I said, that's my 25 <laughs> in other words, when I sold the 25,000, I thought it was the last 25,000 in the history of the state of Louisiana. But when I sold that 25,000, come on now, it opened up 25 million. And I needed the 25,000, but I really needed the 25 million. Somebody just laugh at that devil. Go, huh? All right, another example of generous. Trent and I, we and then the church, we, we were there 20 years. So I was talking to another pastor, and this other pastor, I said, how are you doing financially to church and ministry? And he said, well, this is years, many years ago. He said, well, we've got $100,000 in savings in our church. So when he said we got $100,000 in savings in our church, then it kind of made me mad. So I went and talked to the Lord. I said, Lord, he got 100000 in savings in his church. I don't have no 100000 in savings in my church. I mean, every week we're about to have a nervous breakdown when, they, when the secretary counts the money. I'm saying, my God, you know. And so I don't have no 100000 He got 100000 How come I don't have 100000 uh -oh. And the Lord said, did you ever claim 100000 in savings? I said, no. He said, well, then that's your problem, ain't it? I said, ah, all right, all right. I claim $100,000 in savings for the ministry, but I really needed a million. So I told the secretary, start saving money, put money in saving every week, every saving every week, put money in saving. And so finally got $12,000 in savings. All right? Then I went to Kenneth Hagin's camp meet. Dad Hagin, he got up. You know, he slapped on the podium. Well, we're going to give the rain out, be a blessing to the world, to carry the word of faith around the world. All right? So I took a special offering. Right? Called special offering. So I took 5000 out of savings. And I brought it and had, had my check in my little hot hand. I said, I'm going to sow 5000 So that meant the 12000 now went down to seven. Well, then Dad Hagen got up. He slapped up on him. Hey, what are you he said, what are you going to give? Just double it. I went. <laughs> Man, my hands started sweating. I mean, like my hands were like, double it. So I turned to my wife. I said, uh, uh, you know, I brought 5000 I saying I brought 5000 I was going to sell 5000 But he said, double it. I said, what do you think we ought to do? She said, uh, just double it. I said, that's easy for you to say you don't pay none of the bills around here. So you want me just to double it. 
So I said, all right, let's just do it. Let's just grab a corn stalk, swing out over hell, and spit in the devil's eye. So we doubled up to 10, come on, which meant I only had two left in saving, right? Because I was bleeding for 100,000, really needed a million, took me several months to get 12, and now it went down to two. <laughs> so I gave the 10. All the way home, the devil said, stupid, 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 stupid. Come on, the devil said, he's already got more money than you. I even had an accountant come and tell me that. <laughs> I said, that's exactly the way I want to keep it. I want him to have more money than me. Anybody want to know what happened? For the next three months, the devil said, stupid, stupid, stupid. Where's your money? Stupid, stupid. You got two. You know, you need a hundred thousand. Really need a million. You got two. You got two. <laughs> Count it. One, two. <laughs> right? Anybody know what happened? Come on. I just took the word out, started praising the Lord, thanking the Lord. He takes care of us in grand style. And listen, and within just a matter of a few weeks, somebody put a hundred thousand dollars in the offering. Had never happened before. Thank you. When they went, wow, 100,000. <laughs> well, immediately we were at 100,000. Within just a matter of six months, that account went over a million dollars. Just six months, just that fast. Bam, just like that. Bam. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Praise God. Now, let me show you something. I always found out that my sowing will outperform my savings. I didn't say don't save. I just said my sowing always outperforms my saving. Yeah. Let's try this out over here. I said my sowing. Yeah. Come on, because I believe in saving. Yeah. I said I believe in saving, but I also sowed out of what I had saved, and my sowing yeah. multiplied faster than my saving. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. All right. So here's what Paul said. He said this giving, because these people were poor, and they're going to give their way out. Right? He said, these people are sowing, sowing sparingly, sowing generously. And he said, when you're sowing, here's the way the Lord said to me. He said, sowing is not throwing. Mm. See, because just a farmer, he's sowing, right? But he don't just drive down the highway and go, oh, there's some seed here, some seed there. No. <laughs> the, the farmer sows into strategic soil. All right? And when he sows, he hangs around for the harvest. And he participates in the sowing and participates in the harvest. Y'all still here? Yeah. Now, so in that sowing is not throwing. That means this. When you're sowing, you're actually sowing with a knowing. Y'all still here? Sowing with revelation knowledge simply means you're not just sowing the money. You're actually sowing the word concerning the money. You're not just going, here's some money. You want some money? Just give it. The bucket's coming by. Thump it if you don't want to give nothing. But he said, just put some money in the bucket. <laughs> Once you understand the power of sowing and the grace of God, you'll take your sowing more serious. Right? And the farmers in Kansas, Colorado, that we were preaching for, they said the most important piece of equipment on our farm is the machine that sows the seed. Huh? Planter? The planter. So he said this. He said this. People ask, they said, what's the most important uh, piece of machinery on your, and most of them say it's a tractor, you know, it's a harvester. He said, no, no, it's the planter. He said, because when harvest time comes and I'm harvesting thousands of acres, if I ever get to a section that there's no harvest, that means something was wrong with my planter in that section. So he says, I cannot afford to have a problem with my planter. So he said, even though it's an expensive piece of machinery, we literally will go to the bank and borrow the money to make sure the planter is right. Come on. And if you talk about sowing and giving, a lot of times people say, well, I don't think all that sowing and giving, all that's necessary. I don't think that's necessary. And I always say, well, good. Why don't I bring a bunch of farmers together and you explain to them why sowing is not necessary? Amen. How long do you think a farmer's going to listen to you when you say, ah, oh, all that sowing time, and all that sowing. Just go sit in a rocking chair and see what happens. No, no. 
the sowing part of it, and then you determine to be generous, stretch a little bit beyond. Come on. And I'm not just talking about your giving tonight. I'm talking about your sowing for the rest of your life. Amen. Once you determine I'm going to be a sower, he said God will give seed to the sower. Amen. Amen. That's not just the tither. Amen. All right. God gives seed to the sower. And notice this. It doesn't even say God gives seed to the preacher. Because a lot of times he said, well, I'd work for me as I was a preacher. And I always said, well, come up here and let me ordain you and see how it works for you. <laughs> no, no, it don't work for preachers. That's right. Plenty of broke preachers. Amen. He said it'll work for a sower. Other people say, well, uh, uh, God's going to give seed to the singer. No, he didn't say it'll work for the singer. Good singing. That's really nice. Oh, just sing all you want. But God gives seed to the sower. Are y'all still here? Yeah. That means this. The Lord said to me, he said, if you will get addicted to giving, he said, I will support your habit. That's good. Amen. Oh, good. Praise God. That's good. That's good. Now, let me say it this way. Now, I hope you understand this. In other words, if you're a generous giver, God will literally give you the money to give. Once you fit the profile of a sower, God said, I will increase you because I trust you with money. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 But if you don't trust him, come in and you say, hold on now, Margaret, hold on to your wallet. Now, if you don't trust him, <laughs> Paul said, not that I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Yes. Amen. And so many times I just say, listen, well, you don't want to give. That's right. You don't have to give to me. Let me tell you, send it to Kenneth Hagin Ministries. It'd be a great blessing to Ramo. And then they went, no, they didn't want to send it nowhere. You understand? Because it's a part of their security. And fear of lack. Come on. Fear of lack and the control of mammon. Come on, Luke 16. Jesus said, you cannot serve God and mammon. He didn't say it's between God and the devil. That's an easy choice. Nobody wants a devil. <coughs> but you did want the money. All right, y'all still here now? In other words, breaking the control of money through generosity will set you free from the fear of lack. And you prove me, God said, prove me now in this area. Amen. Amen. Prove me now. And so when Trent and I first got married, we were tithers already because my daddy taught on tithing so much that he'd actually figure it for you. <laughs> he said, before taxes, after taxes, he said, I'll figure it for you. But my daddy taught on tithing so much, I actually feel sorry for people who have not heard it all their life. They're like in shock. They're like, now nah, I got saved and you told me that was free. <laughs> And now you want a percentage? <laughs> In other words, the tithe, come on, the 10%. Somebody said, getting saved won't cost you nothing. But following Jesus will cost you something. Y'all yeah. still here? Yes. So my dad said, you can tithe. Come on, taught us to tithe from the time we were little. So we never had trouble with it. Then he said, you can tithe on what you make or you can tithe on what you want to make. All right. So just as a teenager, I made a dollar an hour working for Slim at the mechanic place and his had big nose drip on you while you're working underneath the car. So now I made a dollar an hour. Right. So I would tithe. Then I started tithing on what I want to make. So I just started double tithing. And then when Trent and I first got married, we agreed we were going to triple tithe. Man, my hands would break out in a sweat because we had two babies come along. One, you know, one baby one year from there. And here comes another baby. We didn't have no Obamacare. <laughs> Man, you know, either you get healed or you just die. You can't afford to go to the doctor. So, so in the area of finances, God said, prove me now. Right? Three words, tithes and offering. Prove me now, Malachi. So uh, we we're just, we we're already giving 20%. And the Lord said, you want to give 30%? And I said, yeah, yeah. And, and he said, uh, when do you want to start that? I said, not now. <laughs> I got two babies. I ain't starting it now. And I was reading Malachi and those three words, bam, hit me right between the eyes. I said, prove me now. I went, 
All right. <laughs> That means I have to prove God in this area personally, that he's my God, not just my daddy's God. Amen. Not my pastor's God. He's my God. He knows my address and he will multiply my seed song. Y'all still here? So I'm not telling all of you to do 30%. I did it because I heard Dad Hagen talking about it. And I just started stretching. Come on. And I went to 20%. And then I stretched to 30%. Then after I hit 30%, come on now. Bring it. The Lord spoke to me and he said, because at 30%, I remember when I was given $1,000 a week at 30%. Many years ago. And when I hit that, the Lord said, look at that. He said, do you believe you could give 2000 a week? I said, Lord, I just got to a thousand. <laughs> I was pretty impressed with that. <laughs> Remember, I was only making a hundred a week when I got started. Y'all still here? And so, as I begin to act on the Word of God, take a step at a time, come on. I'm just telling you, stretch a little bit, get a little bit beyond yes. your comfort zone, yes. and give until your hand sweats just a little bit. You go, hoo, hoo, hoo. Where's my Bible? Oh, whoo, where's them promises? Whoo, there better be a God. In other words, and I trust he hadn't gone blind. I said, God, I'm God, can you see? And we know it can count. He's got a book called Numbers. So we know God can count. All right? So if he's going to multiply my seed zone, we trust he can count. <laughs> and, and so people, people, you know, they'll, they'll be very cautious in this area. You know, they'll go, nah, nah, but watch out for that. You but watch out for that giving though. Come on, but when it comes to Walmart, they're going, all right, it's no problem. Spend it. <laughs> Come on, they're like evil Knievel at Walmart in the mall. You're like, all right, baby, let's try it. When it comes to giving, they go, all right, buddy, don't try that. It'll kill you, man. <laughs> Come on, people love all the extreme sports, you know, where they're getting motorcycles and flipping, you know, and, and you know, flying off a cliff and stuff like that, you know. who they love extreme sports. I said, ah, that ain't nothing. Try giving 30% of your income for the next year, man. That'll get your heart beating. You'll go, my God. <laughs> You big sissy, you scared, ain't you? <laughs> Riding roller skates off a cliff ain't nothing. Be a giver. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, I love me. Stretch out your hand, pray for me, say, Lord, just bless him right now. <laughs> Amen. In other words, when a when revelation comes in this area, it radically challenges the way you think. So Proverbs eleven twenty four. Come on, let me give you this, and I'll close this. Proverbs eleven twenty four. He says this: There is a scattereth, and yet increaseth. Yeah. Yes. There is that withholdeth more than is appropriate, and it tends to poverty. Yeah. Amen. So I read that over and over and over again. There is a scattereth, and increases. There is that withholdeth more than is appropriate, and it tends to poverty. So I read it again. There is a scatter and increases. There is a hold on and has poverty. Well, we want to avoid poverty. But I thought poverty came from money that you don't have. But I found out poverty comes from money you do have that you shouldn't have. You say, what does that mean? That means God's thinking, one translation says, one gives away and still he gets richer. Another keeps what he should give and he is poor. Amen. You understand? You would think that if you held on to your money tighter, you'd have more money. And city says you actually have less money. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Woo. Come on, haven't you ever heard of R.G. Letourneau in East Texas? He's the one that built the earth moving machines, Laterno College in East Texas. And Laterno was born again Baptist Christian, born again Christian, and loved the Lord and always tithed. But his business was going bankrupt. And he made a covenant with God. He said, God, if you will prosper and bless me, I will give you 90% and live on 10%. And God gave him the idea of these giant earth moving machines. 
He began to build them. And they helped us win World War II to build the landing strips for our soldiers in World War II. Different countries of the world. They used them to level the land for farmers so that we, we become the breadbasket for the world. Right? Then they used to level the land for the interstate system. And so Laterno became a multi, multi millionaire and he gave 90% and lived on 10%. Listen now. I'd rather have 10% of 100 million than 90% of 50,000. <laughs> Now, I know some of y'all are going, now, let me write that down to me. <laughs> are y'all still here? In other words, generosity. He says, God loves a cheerful, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. And so many opportunities we have to give in church and in the ministry. But in my family, come on, my dad. I went to the store because the Lord blessed me and I went to the store, the jewelry store, and I said, I'm going to get me a Rolex watch. Man, I went in there. I said, show me the Rolex watch. I mean, before then, I only had a Rolodex. I had a Timex I was making payments on. How many of y'all ever bought a watch and made payments on it? Well, I did, man. Like, my God, how many more payments I got on this watch? So, and it only cost $200. So, now, I went in there. Woo, the Lord has blessed me. I'm going to get me a Rolex. But I'm going to praise the Lord like a this. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Listen, here's what happened. So I walk into the jewelry store to get me a Rolex, and the Lord spoke to me and said, you going to get your Rolex? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> and the Lord said, you think you should have a Rolex? Your dad's never had a Rolex, and he's been pastoring 50 years. I went, well, maybe he don't want one. I said, all right, Lord. I called him my dad. He came into town. I said, let's go. I said, pick you out a Rolex. Any Rolex you want. Just pick it out. I'm taking care of it. He was so happy. Man, he picked him out a Rolex. He was praising the Lord in church. <laughs> and nobody could get mad at him. You know, like, you stealing church money. No, he said, my son bought it for me. <laughs> well, when I bought that Rolex for my dad, anybody want to know what happened? Come on. When I bought him that Rolex, within a matter of the next 24 months, I had people give me 10, 12, 15 Rolex watches. And I'd never had one before. And the best one was $40,000 Rolex with diamonds all over it. I gave every one of them away. When my dad passed away, went to be with the Lord, my mama said, I want to give you the Rolex that you gave to your dad. And Jesse Duplantis put diamonds on the face. A pastor friend put diamonds around it. And that's the only watch I got left is the one I gave my dad. There it is. Listen, be careful what you give away. It may come back to you. So when, when I got the watch, Come on, all the other. I do have one more. Well, I have one more because people gave me all kinds of Breitlings and Cartier, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. I got one more that a pastor gave me, and he said, I'm going to give it to you, but you can never give it away. And it's just in my safe. It's worth maybe $25,000. It's a cheap watch. So I'm going to say, 
Are y'all still here? Yeah. Because the devil is a liar. He says your generosity will cause you to have lack, but God says your generosity will bring supernatural income. Generosity literally is a, is a lifestyle, not just at church, but at home, at the restaurant, in every area you go. Come on, one of the most generous givers in the Bible, 1 Chronicles 29, is a man by the name of David, the psalmist David. And David, 1 Chronicles 29, gave so well that God put a whole chapter in there about it. And David, a man after God's own heart, 1 Chronicles 29, David said, I set my affection on the house of my God. I have of my own proper good given over and above all that I have prepared. And he said, and I have given with all of my might. Glory to God. Glory to God. Then David tells how much he gave. And when he said over and above, probably 30 years ago, I read that scripture and the Lord said, if you will give over and above giving will produce over and above living. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. In other words, David said, this ain't my tithe. This is just because my affection is on the word of God the house of God when they came to build that temple. Come on now. And yeah. David said, here's how much I'm going to give. And it lists how much he gave. Listen, sometimes it is the will of God for you to tell how much you're given. If it was not true, it would not be in the Bible. Not all the time, but sometimes. David said, here's how much I'm giving. Why would that be written in the Bible? Because after David gave, his giving was $1.5 billion. He said, it's not my time. I'd say he'd come a long ways from feeding the sheep. Yeah. <laughs> That's his offering. He said, this is my offering, not my time. Just because I love the work of God, I have prepared with all of my might. Man, David was one of the all of my might type of people. In other words, when he danced, he danced with all of his might. He wasn't trying to be pretty. He's like slinging sweat everywhere, all of his might. When he got home, his wife said, you just look ugly. <laughs> David, you know, could have ruined men for the rest of the 2,000 years if he would have said, I'm sorry, honey, I'll never do that again. Instead, David said, you got to like a man talk back to his wife. David said, I shall be yet more vile than this. <laughs> what happened? He danced with all of his mind. And he said, if that bothers you, it's going to get worse. <laughs> and his wife was Saul's daughter. And the Bible says she was barren from that day. Because when David got into the glory of God, he's a man that loved God, a man after God's own heart. And he danced with all of his might. And when it came time to give, come on. Now listen, when he gave with all of his might, listen, all of his might simply means this. Anybody in here could give with all their might. Yes. Because all your might may be different than all of somebody else's might, but if it's all of your might, you get the same quality. Hallelujah. Same quality of blessing because you gave. Come on. Now if you brought a little kid in here and he tried to pick some up with all of his might and you came in and used all of your might, Come on, at least he gave 100%. He wasn't just kind of like, wah. Listen. Amen. And this church, this ministry here, come on, fixing to buy, you know, a few million dollars worth of land Amen. and building. And here's what I told my, my church people. I said, if you and I will give with all of our might, God will take care of the rest. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. But if you're going to slack, Man, I wasn't going to give $20, but I'm going to give 20 In other words, once we did our best, then God said, watch this. I'm going to do my best. Glory. Bam, and all the money just came in. Come on. Seemed like out of nowhere, millions of dollars just came in. God said, because when you do that with all of your might. He said, I'm going to give with all of my might. Whew, and he is the biggest giver. Amen. Go ahead and laugh about that. So 
when David gave $1.5 billion, right? <laughs> and it's always people, they tell the Lord what they would do if they had. They say, I tell you, Lord, I love you, I love you. If I won the lottery... <laughs> After taxes. <laughs> Come on. I'd give you a million. I'd give you two million. If I had that, I'd give you. You know the story about Billy Bob and his friend, you know, walking down the country road, Billy Bob and his friend. And uh, friend says to Billy Bob, he said, Billy Bob, me and you best friends. Billy Bob, we're best friends. Is that right? Billy Bob said, yeah, we're best friends. He said, matter of fact, he said, if I had $1,000, I'd give you half of Billy Bob. That's right. You're my best friend. He said, wouldn't you do it? Yeah. He said, I'd give you half. I had $1,000. I'd give you half. He said, that's right. And so they kept walking down the country road. And his friend said to Billy Bob, Billy Bob, matter of fact, we're such a close friend. If I had $500, I'd give you half. Would you do it? Billy Bob said, that's right. If I had $500, i would give you half. And they kept walking down the road. Finally, you know, his friend said, Billy Bob, matter of fact, he said, if I had $100, I'd give you half. Come on in. And Billy Bob says, you shut up. You know I got $100. <laughs> in other words, there's always somebody that tells the Lord what they would do if they had. And the Lord wants to know what you would do with what you got now. So when David gave, he turned to his mighty men. <laughs> Read that in 1 Chronicles 29. That's your homework. When he gave, he turned to his mighty men and he said, how much y'all going to give? They said, no pressure. You're not supposed to be putting me under no pressure. You put me under pressure right now. You put me under too much pressure right now. now I'm going to change churches if you do that again. But it put me under so much pressure. I'm going to go and change to somebody else. You put me under pressure. I don't like no pressure. Now, now listen, David really was not putting them under pressure. Come on. He was leading them by example. And he said, now what you going to do? And his mighty men, 400 of them. If you'll study the amount they gave, they gave two and a half billion dollars. Wow. <laughs> in one day, four billion dollars came in to build the temple. Glory, in one day. Glory. And that's under the old covenant. Wow. And we have a better covenant. Yes. See that you abound in this grace also. Glory to God. People say, well, I'm on a fixed income. Well, who fixed it? <laughs> You say, well, I don't need a lot of money. I don't want a lot of money. I'm not even interested in a lot of money. All right. Well, that's fine. I say, how much money do you want? Well, I don't need a lot of money. I can tell you that. I don't want a lot of money. I'm not interested in a lot of money. Well, how much money do you need? Well, I told you I don't want a lot of money. don't need a lot of money. So I don't, I'm not interested in money. You can preach about money. I don't even want to listen to you talking about money because I'm not interested in a lot of money. I said, well, how much money do you need? Well, I told you I don't need a lot of money. I said, well, how much you need? Well, I need about it. I need enough for myself to feed myself, take care of myself. Oh, well, then you're selfish, aren't you? Amen. You just want enough money to take care of yourself Amen. and your family. What if God wanted to bless you enough to pay off the church property? That's right. yes. Amen. 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 Oh, it's getting quiet in this it's Presbyterian right. church. I, instead of you just sitting in your comfort zone, did you know that God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that you have all sufficiency in all things that you'll be able to abound and be known for this grace of giving in your life that it will be talked about by your children and your grandchildren. Even after your funeral, your grandchildren will be saying, Whoo, Granny was blessed. I can tell you that. <laughs> we saw a guy begging on the side of the road today. And, you know, the pastor gave him some money. And that's all nice and everything. But he's got the sign up there. He's begging, right? You almost want to tell him, hey, you, you know, hey, man. You, you ought to slap your mama. That's what you ought to do. He said, slap my mama. Well, yeah, because the Bible said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. So if your mama didn't pay tithes, that's why you're out to your house you're begging. Because if the seed has never been forsaken, that means if you're a father and your mother, one of the best things you can do for your children is be a tither and a giver. That means they'll never be on the side of the road. 
Are y'all still here? In other words, even after your funeral, he said, your righteousness will endure forever. And God said, I will not forget your giving so that your children and your grandchildren will be blessed because of your giving. Does that make sense to you? And he's out there begging. He said, well, you know, your daddy should have been tithing. I'm telling you, he wasn't tithing. I mean, he went hunting a lot. He just didn't do no tithing. I said, that's why you're out here with that card. I mean, you need to call him up and say, Daddy, why don't you pay your tithe? <laughs> Y'all still here? Yeah. So he says, in this area, in giving, David's mighty men gave two and a half billion dollars. How many of them were there? 400. What did those 400 men do? They must have given 50 million apiece. How did they do that? Because when they came to David, they were distressed, discontent, and in debt. But after hanging out with David, their thinking changed. They became giant killers, mighty men with a spirit of faith from hanging around David. Wow. Come on, people come to our church. I used to say, I cannot afford for you to be broke. <laughs> you are going to prosper if I have to snatch all the hair out of your head. You are going to prosper. Your job's going to be blessed. Your business is going to be blessed. Your family's going to be blessed. Because every time something happens at God's house, something's going to happen at your house. Come on, I never got a check from Coca Cola. They say, y'all build a church, and Nike would like to support you, and Coca-Cola, and no Budweiser. No, no, I never got a check on it. That means God rejoices when you prosper. Amen. Because you are the ones that he's going to pour the money through. Yes. I love what T.L. Osborne said. He said, if I was looking for a church to attend, I'd find one that needed at least a million dollars. Because I know God would pour some of that right through me. Come on. So instead of being intimidated, come on, when the pastor says, we need a million, two million, three million, you go, whoo, God, you must be going to pour some of that right through me. Uh -huh. So he says, God loves it when you're generous. Come on now. And whether you're rich or poor, you can be generous. That's right. Right? Amen. And Paul even told Timothy, he said, charge those that are rich in this world. Because we, we got the poor people giving. Then the rich people. And Jesus even stood by the offering and watched how people gave. And he never made a comment on the singing. I mean, we're all concerned about singing. Jesus said, I don't pay no attention to that. Listen, but when it came time for the offering, he watched the offering. He went, people's giving. He went, mm, mm. Come on, said the rich put in a lot. He went, mm. And then someone who's poor gave of their living. And Jesus went, now that person is the most generous. He said, everywhere we talk about the gospel, we'll talk about that woman. If he watched the offering when he was on the earth, I believe he still watches. Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. Come on, sometimes we give and go, mm. Why? Because he knows how much you spent. From Mickey Mouse at Disney World <laughs> on your last deer rifle <laughs> on your Harley Davis. <laughs> Come on, you took thousands to Mickey Mouse and you brought a hundred to church and you said, I feel like I'm generous. No, you love Mickey Mouse more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are y'all still here? Yeah. So Jesus looked at the offering. <laughs> And when the Lord says, how'd you like to step out into the generous department? I said, Lord, I volunteer. In other words, beyond the tithe, the over and above giving. And when David and they gave, it says they gave four billion. And it says this over and above. And it says, and they rejoiced before the Lord with great joy. Can you imagine people giving away two, three, four billion dollars and rejoicing with great joy? I think some people only give enough just to irritate themselves. 
<laughs> They're like, they're trying to take me off. No, listen, if you... <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I, I may have to leave tonight at the church, you know. I, I've been kicked out of better places than this. Now listen. Now my, my daddy said if they run you out of town, get out front and make it look like a parade. So that means it. <laughs> Dad Hagen. Here's what Dad Hagen said. He said he was talking about giving in one of the services and a lady came up to him and said, you know, the spirit was moving until you started talking about that giving that money. Spirit was moving. And when you start talking about that giving, it just killed the spirit. And dad said, that's exa uh, dad Hagen said, that's exactly right. He said, that was a stingy spirit I had to kill. <laughs> Come on. You can't get no stingy Holy Ghost. <laughs> Uh -huh. That means, listen now, when you're investing in the work of God, an eternal investment, actually, he said, you brought nothing to the world, can't take nothing out, right? That's right. But one guy told his wife, he said, I'm going to be the first man to take my money with me when I die. He told his wife. He said, I'll be the first one. He said, I've worked hard for my money. He said, and I got it all together, and I got it up there in the attic, and I'm going to take it with me when I die. And one day he died. After the funeral, I went, hmm, wonder if he took that money. So she climbed up in the attic, and all the money was still there. She said, hmm, put it in the basement. <laughs> you see, that's so he could get it on the way down. <laughs> Are y'all still here? In other words... Come on now. Y'all are the Marines here tonight. Y'all are the tough ones. Right? Amen. 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 In other words, generosity, listen now, reflects your heart. Generosity. And anybody can be generous. So Paul told Timothy, he said, you charge those who are rich in this world. So if he told him to do it, that's what I do. I just go, da 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 charge. <laughs> those who are rich. And he's talking to people that are rich in the church. So there must be some people in the church supposed to be rich. Amen. I volunteered for that. I said, okay, Lord, I volunteer. If you need to have some rich people in there, I'll be one of them because I've been rich and I've been poor. Rich is better. So Paul told Timothy, talk to the rich people at church because Timothy was a pastor. So it's supposed to be some rich people at church. Anybody here want to volunteer for that program? No. What did he tell them? He said, charge them that they do what? Don't be high-minded. That means just because you got money don't make you better than nobody else. Amen. That's good. And he said, and charge them that they be willing to distribute. Generous. Generosity. Right? That they be generous in their giving. What does that mean? That means God does not mind you having Mercedes living. As long as you don't have skateboard giving. <laughs> Come on, our church have people with Mercedes, BMWs, nothing wrong with that. I just said, don't think you're going to come here and drive up in no Mercedes and a BMW and give $25. It ain't going to happen. The ushers will take the rims off of your car while you're sitting <laughs> in church. We don't even want to see your Rolex or your Molex or your Rolodex <laughs> if you're not generous. Amen. Uh, That's good preaching. Are y'all still here? In other words, what happened is Jesus said in Luke 16, if you and I will be faithful when it comes to money, God will commit to you true riches. In other words, there's money tests all of us pass. Right? Putting the Lord first financially. He said, if you pass that money test, I will commit to you true riches. Well, what's true riches? Well, true riches must not be money. Come on. I know people got money, most unhappy people in the world. Come on. 
So true riches are not money. True riches are what? Revelation of the word of God. Amen. Come on, the will of God for your life. Amen. Come on, being filled with the Holy Spirit, Amen. the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Amen. the presence of Jesus in your house, your children serving the Lord, your grandchildren serving the Lord. Amen. That's better than any amount of money. Yes. Come on. And in Acts chapter 10, Cornelius, come on now, wasn't even a Christian. But his prayers, his spiritual hunger, and his generosity came up before God. Glory to God. Whoa, come on now. His generosity and his prayers came up before God. If you could ever get the prayers to give. Because <laughs> they said, no, the Lord's called me to pray. No, he called you to give. <laughs> Matter of fact, we don't even want you singing on the platform if you don't give. Amen. You're welcome as a visitor, but don't expect to be up there. <laughs> if you ain't a giver. Listen, Carnelia's prayers and his what? Giving came up before God. His generosity. And God said, we're going to have to do something at Carnelia's house. Sent the angel. Sent Peter. And his whole family was filled with the Holy Ghost. Did you know you and I, in our prayers, our spiritual hunger, and express that through generosity, can literally get God's attention. And God will say, I'm going to have to do something at your house. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm going to have to do something at your house. And I said, Lord, I'm a tither, I'm a giver, but I'm asking you for something better than money. The Lord said, if you'll be a generous giver, I'll do things for you that money cannot do. Amen. I said, Lord, I'm asking you for my children to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Y'all still here? Yeah. In other words, I'm partnering with the gospel for other people's lives to be changed. And Lord, I'm trusting you that my children and my grandchildren will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Lord, I'm trusting you that you do something in my life that is significant because I want your will and your plan for my life not just to end up with a bunch of money. Are y'all still here? In other words, it's good. God will bless you and God will increase you. But there's something about generosity. Y'all still here? Don't get, don't get nervous. I ain't taking no pledges. <laughs> you understand? Come on. But the days that are ahead and the weeks and the months that are ahead, when you determine... I'm going to be a generous sower and giver. Come on. And you just stretch a little bit beyond your comfort zone. That means your seed is guaranteed. That means this. As a preacher, as a minister, as a traveling minister, that means this. My generosity will produce a harvest for me that no man can stop. Your generosity in giving will do things for you that your job could never do. There's nobody that can stop your pr promotion. Come on, even when they say. <laughs> Come on, my friend in Alabama, he heard me preach on over and above giving, and he gave an over and above offering, and he systematically did that week after week, and he had 80, was it eight, 800 employees underneath him at an aviation plant in Alabama. And his boss came to him and said, there'll be no bonuses for Christmas this year and there'll be no raises. So tell all 800 guys that work under you, there'll be no bonuses and there'll be no raises this year. He went to the Christmas party and the boss came up and handed him an envelope. And he said, uh, what is that? The boss said, uh, that's over and above. Over and above. His boss ain't even a Christian. But his boss spoke the exact words that David said in First Chronicles 29. When he was over and above giving, his boss said, that's over and above. He said, but I thought you said, he said, but that's over and above. Don't worry about it. So immediately he had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I 
So we went into 1 John. <laughs> Maybe it was 3 John. <laughs> well, we put that on the envelope. And it was a $100,000 bonus over and above. But it was in stock that would mature in five years. He was very happy. Except just a few months later, the company was bought by another company. And that check went up three times. And it matured immediately. And every time I talk about this, he goes, I like that over and above giving. <laughs> you understand? Because once you prove that in your life, there's nobody that can stop your harvest. When it looks like the challenge is coming on, here's what Dad Hagen said. He said, you just start laughing and say, ha, ha, ha. The money will come. Thank you, Lord. You're my provider. In other words, never accuse God of child abuse. If he's your father, I would just say, thank you, Father. You always take care of me. In grand style. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 I was preaching in a certain church. And so after I preached, you know, they gave me an offering. They did the best they could, and that's fine. But, they, you know, didn't really meet my budget, but it was the best. They were being generous, right? So afterwards, before I left town, there was a, a woman in town. And her daughters, they said, we'd like to have lunch with you. They didn't go to that church. They said, well, I'd known them for years. So we went to have lunch. And before we finished eating, we ordered hamburgers and french fries. And they started giving me checks. Well, they gave me $40,000. Just while I'm having hamburgers. They said, we're going to tell you. $40,000. They'll tell them to Let me give you $10,000. Let me give you $20,000. I was going to give $40,000. I'll give them another $40,000. I said, uh, y'all yeah, yeah, won't need more french fries. <laughs> When you understand the power of generous sowing, God is able. Let me try that one more time. My expectation is on God. Thank you, Lord. Come on. I got my eyes off of men. And I said, God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to me. Everybody say, come to me. Come to me. In abundance. In abundance. No exceptions. God is able. He's my God. So Smith Wigglesworth said, always just say, my father God always takes care of me. Amen. In grand style. Amen. Yeah. Amen. My father God always yeah. takes care of me. In grand style. So if you're whining and complaining, you're accusing God of child abuse. Yeah. Amen. When you face a challenge, you say, Father God, you always take care of me <coughs> in right. grand style. Right. Yeah. I want to thank you, Lord, for you always. And while you're praising him and giving him thanks, come on now, you're accelerating your harvest because when you get happy and you give, I've literally seen at Rhema, Brother Higgins' meeting, people came down to give $10,000 at a time. And as they came down, the spirit of grace and giving hit that place and the glory hit that place and they were dancing and dancing and I was sitting up there in the minister section and I couldn't give $10,000. I could only give 500 or 1,000. That's still the best I could do. And I saw them dancing and instead of getting mad about it, I said, I'm going to give $10,000 on one of these days when I come up here. <laughs> Wasn't long. I showed up. I got 10,000. I like to dance with y'all. <laughs> Are y'all still here? Because yeah. if you take authority over your giving, yeah. you'll be able to take authority over your receiving. And Dad Hagen's meeting, if the, the elders, you know, the leaders of his ministry, they're all uh, older gentlemen. You know what I mean? Not old, just older. 
They're all in their 70s. Man, the Holy Spirit was moving. Everybody's real happy. These guys are all, you know, generous givers and their companies and their businesses. I mean, one of them, you know, Abner Yoder's, you know, a friend of ours for many years. And his company did $150 million that year. Very dignified gentleman. And man, the Holy Spirit's moving. And I watched Dad Hagen's board members get down at the front and start playing leapfrog. <laughs> They got so full of the Holy Ghost, 70-year-old, 75, dignified, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars up there laughing and playing leapfrog. They were so full of the Holy Ghost, they realized it was the blessing of the Lord. And they're up there jumping and dancing and laughing, and I'm just sitting there, and the Lord said to me, he said, you see them up there rejoicing? They are a hundred million apiece. Now, why don't you going to just sit back here with your broke behind and you ain't got no money? Why don't you get up there and rejoice with them? And I went, all right. So I, I got up there. I could roll for a thousand. So I'm a rolling with a hundred million. In other words, I started rejoicing. I want you to see that in First Chronicles 29, they got so happy when they're giving that David said, Lord, I want you to keep this in the imagination of my people forever. The abundance, the joy, the generosity. Woo! I love this because someone said it this way. They said, like a mother smiles their baby into smiling. God loves us into loving. And he gives us into giving. Come on, mama don't slap their baby into smiling. She don't say, you better smile. No. <laughs> she goes, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. And God is the biggest giver. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And he gives until you say, Lord, Lord. I want to be a giver Amen. the way you're a giver. Amen. Ha, 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 ha. Go ahead and laugh for a minute. Ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. Ha 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 ha! Come on, I'm a giver. I'm a giver. Ha 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 ha! Ha ha ha! I am a giver. I am a giver. I love to give. I love to give. Every day, I am addicted to giving. I need a fix. <laughs> and you start where you're at. Come on. I started at $100 a week. Are y'all still here? Yeah. I just started $100 and just stuck with it. Just kept on $100 a week. And I just kept on sowing my seed, get the scriptures out. And then Dad Hagen said, he said, there's something about dancing in the Holy Ghost. So my dad is friends with, with uh, John Osteen and with Brother Goodwin in Pasadena. And so Brother Goodwin, he told my dad, he said, you see all my church property here? He said, I paid for all this church property we did as a church. He said, we paid for all of it. He said, I just danced the money in. <laughs> Anytime we need money, he said, I just get in my room, just start dancing around before the Lord and say, ha, 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 the money will come. Ha, 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 ha. He said, and money just came in. We paid off all the property and all of them just while I was dancing. <laughs> You can't worry the money in. Glory. I said, you can't worry the money in. Come on, if you're a tither and you're a giver, you all just jump around your house and go, whoo, well, there's some money coming into my house. My job, my business is blessed. Oh, and just jumping around saying the money will come. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. I just don't lack for money. Ha, ha, ha. I do not lack. Woo, the money always comes. The money always comes. And just dance around the house. <laughs> on your feet. Praise the Lord. Ha, 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 ha. Now we're fixing to rejoice. He says, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified. 
who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. In other words, it pleases God when you prosper. It pleases God when your church prospers. Come on, every time you buy land and build a building, you're serving notice on the devil who's the God of this world. And you're saying, devil, the earth don't belong to you. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, the money will come. Houses and lands, property, buildings. Come on. Jobs and businesses are come into your hand. God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. Even while you're sleeping tonight, Angels are going out on assignment causing money to come in. So Dad Hagen said it this way. We'll participate now with our authority as sowers and tithers and givers. And he said, you say this. I claim, and you say, how much you claim? I started at 100, went to 300, then I went to 500, then I went to 800, then I went to 1,000, I went to 10,000 a week. Then I went to 20,000 a week. Then I went to 30,000 a week. Then I went to 40,000 a week. Then I went to 50,000 a week. Then I went to 60,000 a week. Then I went to 70,000 a week. I ain't going to tell you no more. You can be getting mad at me. But let's, let me tell you this. <laughs> you say, well, I wish. Listen, if wishing and hoping was fruits and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> you have authority as a believer. And Dad Hagen said, your faith will grow in this area. And you say, I claim, declare how much it is you claim. Start where you're at and move up. I claim and then say, Satan, I command you to take your hands off my money. Oh, yes. yeah. Then you say, angels, ministering spirits, go and call the money to come. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Amen. Matter of fact, I declare, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I do not lack for ability. I do not lack for opportunity. And I never lack for money. I never lack for money. I am a tither. I'm a generous giver. And the harvest always comes in. I rejoice in the goodness of God. I jump and shout and celebrate that the Father God is taking care of me in grand style. Thank you, Lord. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. It is the blessing of the Lord that makes me rich and adds no sorrow. With it. Come on, just laugh about that for a minute. Ah, 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 ah. Now, I know some of y'all ain't participating in this part very well. Because you think you already got your amount guaranteed. But when you have to live on your own faith, you'll start paying attention better. You'll, uh, uh, what would you say now? Come on, because when I left home, my daddy said, there is a God. You better meet him. And I said, God! How many believe you can meet God and all of his grace, not just in the area of your salvation, but in the area of your finances? Yes. Ha, 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 <laughs> Come on, do like this, just go. You say, what you doing for? That one angel right there. You say, what you doing? He's on assignment. 
Come on, my job, my business, my finances, my future. The money will come. Uh, now listen close. I got a pastor friend. You believe in God for the ministry? You're not just believing God for yourself, but for the ministry. He needed $3 million for the ministry. So he said he's praying, oh God, oh God, somehow. Oh God, somehow we need $3 million. My God, how is that ever going to happen? But God, I know you can do it, God. Somehow, God, we need $3 million. He said the Lord stopped him and said, how would you act if you already had the $3 million? He said, well, I'd be real happy. But then he went back to praying, oh God, somehow, somehow. The Lord said, stop it. How would you act if you already had three million? He said, I said I'd be real happy. Oh, God, somehow, somehow, give me three million dollars. The church, we need three million dollars. It looks impossible, but God, I know it's possible. Somehow. And the Lord stopped and said, how would you act if you already had three million? He went, oh, how would you act? Oh, you want me to act like I already got the three million. He went, oh, okay. Oh, I want to thank you, Lord, for the three million. I thank you, Lord, for the three million dollars. Ha, ha, for the church, for the ministry, the money's coming in. Ha, ha, thank you for three million. Yeah. All the money came in. Next time I saw him, he said, oh, God, we need 14 million. Oh, God, we need 14 The Lord said, how would you act? He went, oh, I got it. Oh, I want to thank you, Lord, for 14 million. That's what he said. So I just want to ask you, how would you act if you already had the thing that you're believing for? Oh, I want to, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, my business, my job. So Dad Hagen said, when you're tempted to doubt, just laugh. And he said, never talk lack. Always say, the money will come. The money will come. And when the devil comes, you say, how's that ever going to happen? You go, ha, 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 The money will come. Ha, 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 the money will come. Matter of fact, right while you're rejoicing, it's the angels going ahead of me. Here's the way I like to say it. While you're rejoicing here, something is happening back at your house. Woo! Come on, while I'm praising here, something is happening. Oh, in my future. I said, well, I thought I was going to hear something real spiritual tonight. Your generosity is a reflection of your spirituality. So I don't know exactly everything you're believing for. How would you act if you already had it? Listen, because we're not just believing for things for ourselves. We're believing for a harvest. And we can be a blessing in Houston, come on, in Africa, in India, in Vietnam, in Cuba, in Colombia, in Brazil, in Argentina. Ha! God is able to make all great. Now I want you just to laugh for a minute and say, ha, 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 ha. My father's a giver. Ha, ha, ha. I'm a giver. Giving runs in my family. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. I love to give. Ha, ha, ha. I'm a generous giver. Ha, 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 ha. I sow generously. And I reap generously. Ha, 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 ha. Come on, shout about it. I reap generously. That's a harvest of blessing. Ha 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 
allow the Holy Spirit to paint the picture of you living in that blessing. Woo. Woo. I said, allow the Holy Spirit to paint that picture that whatever the enemy meant for evil, God is turning that thing around. Glory to God. Woo! For your blessing, whatever the enemy meant for evil, God is turning that thing around. Amen. Psalm 66 verse 12 says you went through fire and you went through water and men rode over your head, but God brought you out to a wealthy place. Ha, 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 When David danced, come on, in the South, we say you got to dance with who brung you. If you don't dance with who brung you, you ain't going to have no ride home. When David danced, he said it was before the Lord. He's the one that brung me out of the sheepfold. He's the one that made me royalty and made me a king. He's the one that has blessed me. I just got to rejoice before the Lord. Your rejoicing literally is a harvesting factor. Come on, you made sure the planter was working, and now make sure your harvester is working. And while you're rejoicing, you're saying, ha, 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 ha. The money will come. Come on, the land will come. The buildings will come. The houses will come. Come on, the business will come for your job. Ha ha, the Lord, my Father God. Ha ha ha, the blessing of the Lord. And I just laugh and rejoice. Say, the money will come. Ha 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 ha. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ha 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. You got something? Ha, 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 ha. The thing, that, the thing that's coming to my mind right now is Numbers, the sixth chapter. I don't know what time is it. Sorry about that. That, that, that was the preliminary. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's a real thing tonight. And in the sixth chapter of Numbers, it was describing people that were just separated and dedicated to God for a special work. And at the end of that chapter, God said, bless the people, and this is the way that you bless them. Mm -hmm. And I just sense the blessing of the Lord to those who have received Amen. the word and are acting on the word wow. and, and receiving the faith of God to come up another level in, this, in the generosity Hallelujah. of the Lord. And the grace of God, not only in giving, but also in receiving. Yeah. Praise giving God. There's a blessing that uh, should be declared and should be spoken as you give tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some of you are stepping out of the shadow into the sun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To the light. Hallelujah. Into the light of the mm -hmm. face of God. When he shines his face on you. You know you're blessed. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So that's just. Let's read it. Are you ready? Are you ready to receive this? Because we just preaching over in Singapore not too long ago. In Singapore, they just built a $200 million church and paid cash for it. Glory. Hallelujah. If you would have seen Singapore in 1950, you wouldn't believe what I'm telling you right now. But the gospel of Christ came into that nation and such extreme blessing and prosperity. Church, churches of 200 million paid cash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Singapore. You might want to change it to sing a rich. <laughs> Y'all still here? And every service, I preached 25,000 people. Every service, they read this blessing. And every time they read it, everybody received it like the Lord was talking to them. Amen. I want you to get ready. I want you to receive it because Dad Hagen, he used to walk around them Holy Ghost meetings and just slap you and say, be blessed. 
Come on. I receive that blessing. All right, now get ready. Here it comes. Here's what he said. The Lord said in Numbers chapter 6, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel, saying to them, verse 24, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And God said, I will put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. The Message Bible says it this way. He says, God bless you and keep you. God smile on you and gift you. God look you full in the face and make you prosper. Come on. Are y'all still? I'm going to read it to you one more time. I want you just to receive it. Come on, just like the Lord is talking to you. Because of the blood of Jesus. I said, because of the blood of Jesus, that's where the blessing comes from. He says, here's what the Lord said, and here's what he's declaring to you. God bless you and keep you. God is smiling on you. Come on, I just see him smiling. Come on, there's something about you God likes. Favor. God smile on you and gift you. That means he's going to keep giving to you. And God look you full in the face and make you prosper. Come on now, lift up your face to the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The blessing of the Lord. Bless coming in and bless going out. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you smile upon us. Woo, you give us all grace and faith. The blessing of the Lord. Ha, ha, ha. You make us prosper. Our jobs and businesses, our family, the blessing of the Lord. Woo! Come on, just thank Him for it right now. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Father God. I receive your blessing. Oh your favor and your blessing and your ability upon our lives and our family. We are careful to give you all the praise and glory. Woo, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. I rejoice in your mercy. I rejoice in your grace. I rejoice in your presence. I rejoice before your faith. I rejoice in your goodness. I rejoice in your love. Thank you, Father God. All your blessing upon our lives. Marriages are blessed and children are blessed and grandchildren are blessed. The blessing of the Lord. Come on, just shout about it. Hallelujah. at the devil a while. Say, ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, Come on, the devil say, what you gonna do if that don't work? You go, ha, 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 What you gonna do when it does work? Because I know it's working. Ha, 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 The word is working. Woo! Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Well, I, it just seemed like the Holy Spirit wanted to deal with that subject. Come on. Because God will do things for you that you wouldn't even do for yourself. When the Lord spoke to me first about getting a jet, I went, Lord have mercy. A jet? It took me five years, and he kept talking to me about it. I br saw Brother Copeland had a meeting, and I said, you know, the Lord spoke to me about a jet, and I said, and somebody gave me $500 for a jet. I said, you can't even buy no toilet paper for a jet for $500. <laughs> he 
And you know what, the, what Brother Copeland did? He pointed right at me with a butter knife because we're sitting at a table. He said, the Lord told me to tell you, don't you ever joke about a jet again. He said, I've been trying to get a jet to you for five years and you hadn't been able to receive it. He said, now, if you'll change your thinking, you're talking, your jet will come to you. You know what? All right. <laughs> I said, if the Lord been trying to get that to me for five years, I hadn't been able to receive it. I wonder what else he's been trying to get to me that I haven't been able to receive. You see, Jesus in his teaching was never working on the giving part of God. He was always working on the receiving part of man. Because you never have to talk God into giving, but you do have to teach people how to receive. Thank you, Lord. Ha, 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 ha. Come on, you better get ready for the future. Ha, ha, ha. I didn't say you'll go where no man has gone before, but you'll sure go where you ain't never been before. You'll go financially where no one in your family's ever been before. And they'll say, how'd you get there? You say, ah, uh, it's a blessing of the Lord. Ha, 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 ha. Come on, even a preacher came, an evangelist came to me. He said, man, how do you make it? I said, man, I am doing great. He said, how do you make it? I said, let me tell you how. You want me to tell you how? I said, you take the first 30% of everything that's given to you and you give it away. He said, I can't make it now. How am I going to give away 30%? I said, well, you ain't making it anyhow. What you got to lose? <laughs> he walked away and he still never made it. You say, why? Because he really honored money Come on, fear of lack more than he honored the Lord. Y'all still here? Yeah. At least he could have said, well, I'm already a tither and I'm going to take it up 15%. Well, then I'm going to take it up 20%. And then as you give, you can be a blessing in your church. Amen. 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 Come on. Amen. You can be a blessing around the world in the gospel. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. So get ready. There's some things God's been trying to get to you. And now the Lord's working in you. So you say, okay, okay Lord, I receive it. I receive it. I believe and I receive the harvest of blessing. I'll sow generously. I will reap generously. Ha, 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 ha. That seed has a return address. And it will come right to my house. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Speak the apostolic blessing. Amen. That's what number six is, right? Philippians 4. Oh, you want to use it in Philippians 4. All right. Are you ready? Philippians 4 is really number six in Philippians. <laughs> Philippians 4. Are you ready? <laughs> Paul said to the Philippians, he said, you gave generously. You gave once, gave again. He said, now, are you ready? Yes. He said, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. Say it again. But my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now just go ahead and laugh about it. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for the preaching of God's Word. We trust that your faith and your love for God is stronger than ever before. Chaz and Joni Stevenson have a New Testament vision of spreading the full gospel of Christ around the world, helping unbelievers meet Jesus Christ, and building strong Christians who can impact their world, and are doing so by preaching the uncompromised Word of God with the power of the Holy Spirit. To join us in that vision, please consider an offering to help with media costs or an offering to simply show the value of the spiritual things you have received. You may give online, by mail, or by phoning in with a credit card. If you're in Houston, Texas, and looking for a good home church, Pastors Chaz and Joni invite you to a spirit-filled, life-changing service at Houston Faith Church, where we're certain you'll experience the love and goodness of God in a real and powerful way. For more information about God, Houston Faith Church, or Stevenson Ministries, please visit us on the web where you can now watch services via live streaming and find many other life-changing resources or download our Houston Faith phone app.